Start trying to figure out what only God knows. There can only be one result, and that's confusion. If I would have started out tonight and said, how many of you are confused right now about something going on in your life? I would have had a lot of hands go up. But see, here's the truth. You can't be confused if you refuse to try to figure it out. I can tell you right now, Dave is a guy that does not try to figure anything out. He's just like, God knows, and he'll take care of it. I'm casting my care. And I've gotten there. It's taken me 40 years, but I've, I have a breakdown every once in a while, but I'm, I'm doing good. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says that we know in part. We know in part. We don't know everything. We're not intended to know everything. It wouldn't even be good for us if we knew everything. Do you know if you knew right now everything coming up in your future, hmm, <laughs> most of us would just sign off and say, forget it. <laughs> or even if you knew how God intends to use you or bless you in the future, you might get full of pride and that would ruin it. So God only reveals things to us a little bit of time as he knows it's right. And there is no such thing there's no need for trust if we know everything. Do you know that God really couldn't even be your God if you knew everything that he knows? We need to get satisfied to know the one who knows and not have to know everything. Can some of you take a step of faith tonight and say, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but I am not gonna try to figure it out anymore. I am gonna trust God and I am gonna do good. Wow, I feel the burdens lifting already. Woo! There they go. See, here's the thing. The devil sends out... He comes, sits real close to your ear. Well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, huh. How'd that happen? Well, look at that person over there. They don't, they're not even serving God and they're blessed. Just explain that. If God is so good, how did that happen? If God loves you so much, how did that happen? And you know what? I'm going to show you a scripture in a little bit that said that Jesus overheard but ignored <laughs> the bad reports that were coming to him. You know, I may hear the devil, but I don't have to believe him. I may hear him, but I don't have to bow down to him. And everything that he screams in your ear, you need to just say, I don't, I don't have to know. I'm gonna trust God and do good. I'm gonna trust God and do good. I'm gonna trust God and do good, and I'm always gonna come out on top if I do that. Amen? You gotta be careful about all the things that the enemy, the lies that he puts in your head that you listen to. Is anybody tired of being confused all the time? Are you tired of your head hurting because you think, 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 think? Can I tell you a great deliverance for many of you would just be if you just stopped thinking so much all the time about everything. <laughs> just get around to enjoying life a little bit. You wanna really make the devil mad? Trust God and enjoy your life while God is solving your problem. <laughs> Did you hear me? While God is solving your problem, you can enjoy your life. That's what trust means. Trust means I'm no longer miserable. Trust means I'm letting go of it and I'm gonna do what I can do, but I'm not gonna try to do what I cannot do. Hallelujah. My gosh, I about drove myself crazy for years trying to figure everything out. And you know, sometimes when you think you've got answers, you still don't have answers. 
You just think you've got answers. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, the world is full of mysteries. The Bible talks about mysteries, the mystery of Christ, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, the mysteries of heaven, the mystery of Christ in me, the hope of glory. So many mysteries. And why do we get so rattled about the things that we don't understand? We should be intrigued by these mysteries. Pastor Mike told me today that of, of all the movies watched, the number one of all time of everybody, their favorite movies are mysteries. I love mysteries. You, you're drawn in. <laughs> you come closer. But why is it when there's a mystery in our relationship with God that sometimes we... <laughs> we should be amazed by the mysteries of heaven and the mysteries of the incarnation and, the, and the, the mystery of the Trinity. We should just be like, God, you are so awesome. Nobody can figure you out. This is a mystery we are not gonna figure out. The Bible says when Jesus comes again, we will know him even as we are known right now. There's going to be a time in your life when you will know everything, but it is not now. And if you don't do anything else on this Friday night, July 31st, 2015, get it through your head that you are gonna go through life not knowing a lot of things and you can get happy about it and have a lot of peace. Now in the morning when you wake up and the first thing you start trying to figure something out, open your mouth and say, I'm gonna trust God and do good. I'm gonna trust God and do good. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Take notice, I tell you a mystery. <laughs> a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed and transformed. Now he's basically saying that when Christ comes, there will be some that won't ever die because the ones who are alive on the earth at that time will be caught up in the air. And those that have already gone before will rise up and will meet him in the air. And we'll all be changed, changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call, for a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, free and immune from decay, and we shall all be changed and transformed. I tell you, this is shouting scripture. This is what we get to look forward to. You know what? Even when Jesus shows up, we're still gonna have stuff wrong with us. He doesn't care that you never reach the place of perfection. What he wants is a perfect heart who's always moving toward him, moving toward him, moving toward him. And I tell people all the time, just get up every day and do the best you can and let God do the rest of what you can't do. And when he returns, whatever is still wrong with you is going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And you will be like him and see him as he is. You know what? I don't worry about the stuff that's wrong with me anymore. It doesn't trouble me one bit. And it makes the devil so mad he's about to have a nervous breakdown. You know why I don't worry with it anymore? Because I about killed myself with worry over it for years and years. And you know what God finally showed me? You're no surprise to me. I knew what I was getting when I got you. Come on. I mean, do you honestly think that you got saved and the next day God said, oh, no. I sure didn't know you were going to be like this. God is not surprised by anything that happens in our life. The people in Nepal were surprised by the earthquake, but God was not surprised. 
And you may be surprised by some of the things that are going on in your life right now, but God is not surprised. And he already has prepared your way of escape. God has already planned the way out and all. Sleep and it feels like 
to do is keep taking some trust and some do good. I love this message.
mysteries. Let's lean into them instead of backing away from them. Verse 53, for this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature and this mortal part of us, this nature that is capable of dying, must put on immor Im immortality, freedom from death. Now just hang on. And when this perishable part puts on the imperishable, and this that was capable of dying puts on freedom from death, then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says, death is swallowed up in and unto victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? You may leave this earth, but you won't die. You'll be like him, even as he is right now, and you'll understand everything that you don't understand now. You know, there's a lot of things that I don't understand that don't confuse me. I don't understand gravity, but I'm enjoying it right now. <laughs> I don't get upset about not understanding that. I don't fully understand all the mechanics of breathing, but I'm participating and <laughs> enjoying it. I don't understand how trees and grass and flowers can look so dead in the winter and have no life in them, and then in the spring they just kind of, but I enjoy that every year, and I'm like, oh my God, you are so good. I don't understand electricity, but I depend on it. I don't know how I can put a little message in my cell phone and send it to my son who's in India and in less than five minutes have a message back from him. I don't understand it, but I use it every day. Why do we think that we have to understand everything about God who is less understandable than anybody? <laughs> I don't need to understand what God's doing in my life. I just need to trust him that he's good and whatever he's doing, whether I like it or not right now, I will like it eventually. I wish that I could really explain to you all the stuff that I've went through in my life. Oh, I was such an unbelievable mess. And the work that God has done in me. But it hasn't all been pleasant. But it's so worth it. Stop running away from God and running away from everything that's uncomfortable and everything that's hard and everything that hurts you a little bit and just dig in and say, God, I want your will in my life. You do what you want to do in my life. When I lost all my friends, I was lonely. I mean, lonely. And it was hard and it hurt, but I couldn't have gone to the next place. I couldn't have carried all that baggage with me. Some of you have got some stuff that you're trying to take with you and it's just dead baggage and you need to get rid of it and let it go. But why do we keep hanging on and hanging on and hanging on? Because sometimes even our pain, we're so attached to it that we don't wanna let go of it. Like I said this morning, we can learn how to function within our dysfunction. It really blessed me when I saw this, you know, right, right down to the very end. The last thing that Jesus said was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And right before that, he said, my God, my God, why? Even Jesus in his humanity said, why? You know, I can ask why, but I don't have to get confused. God, show me why if you want to, but if you don't, I'm gonna trust you anyway. And you know what else Jesus did on the cross? He not only continued to trust God on the cross when he was hurting the worst that he could possibly hurt. All of us together are not hurting as bad tonight as Jesus hurt on that cross. We can put all of our pain and all of our confusion together and it doesn't even begin to match what he went through. But you know what? On that cross, he was loving people right to the very end. Not only did he say, I commit myself into your hands, but there was a couple of thieves there. 
he ministered to them. Took the time in his pain, you'll be with me today in paradise. You know what else I love? He made provision for his mom. Come on, in the midst of his pain, he said, John, I want you to take care of my mother. Right to the very end, he was trusting God and doing good, trusting God and doing good, trusting God and doing good, trusting God and doing good. You know, we worry way too much about what other people are doing to us and not nearly enough we don't pay enough attention to how we should respond. Do you know that you're not responsible for anybody but you? And no matter how many wrong things somebody does to you, the only thing you're responsible for and the only thing I'm responsible for is my reaction. Amen? <laughs> Occupy until I come. In the book of Luke, it says, that Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth when I come back? You know, no matter how big our problem is, all Jesus wants us to do is just believe. Believe, simple childlike faith. I don't understand it, God, but I believe. I don't understand why I had cancer 25 years ago. I was out preaching faith and laying hands on other people, praying for their healing that had stuff like that. But I just kept saying, I trust you, God. I trust you, I trust you and he took care of it. There's a lot of things in my life I don't understand. I don't understand why the power got shut off in the building last night. How dumb is that? <laughs> I mean, I don't understand that, but, I, you know, I'm growing, I'm stretching. I, do any of you have any stretch marks? You know, if you're not being stretched in faith, <laughs> come on, women get stretch marks when they're giving birth. We need to all have spiritual stretch marks in our life. We need to be giving birth to some stuff, amen? This is one time when the men get to have stretch marks. God stretches us in our life. How many of you have walked with God a few years and now you have a much greater capacity to trust him than you did before? Amen? Isn't life so much better when we trust God? No matter what your problem is, the answer to it is trust God and do good. I love John 11, 40. He said, did I not tell you and promise you that if you would only believe, you would see the glory of God? <laughs> what is the work that God requires of us that we believe? Come on, some of you, when I said everything around you shaking and you, I could see you like, there's pain in this room tonight. You know what? And I understand. I get it. And we get confused about our pain. It's interesting that we never get confused about the good times. You know, I've never sat around and got confused about, wow, I wonder, I just can't figure out why God is letting me be on television around the world. Why does, that really confuses me. <laughs> I've never one time done that. I'm just like, yes. But if he took me off, I'd be confused. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We don't, we don't get, you know, our confusion is selective, and we're only confused about the stuff we don't like. We're only confused about the things that hurt, but w let's trust God with our pain. Good. Good. Can some of you take your pain tonight and trust God with your pain and say, God, this hurts so bad, I feel like I can't stand it, but I trust you, and I'm going to keep trying to be a blessing to other people because I believe that even if it hurts, your 